Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at the speed of light equation. So if you haven't followed along in your notes, make sure you do so. And if you have any questions, you can ask me when we see you next. All right. So the speed of light equation, um, the first thing that we need to talk about before we even look at the equation is what are we looking at? So what we're looking at is the relationship between the wavelength of a photon or a wave of light and the frequency of a photon or a wave of light. And so what's the relationship between these two? We like to call that relationship an inverse relationship. What does inverse mean? Like it kind of means opposite, I guess, right? So wavelength and frequency, if they're inverse, that means if this is a large number, this will be a small number. And if this, on the other hand, is a small number, this will be a large number. So they're opposites. That's kind of how it works. And there's a constant related to them. So like it says right here, what does that mean? If we're looking at two different photons of light or two different waves of light, uh, if the wavelength is long, so which one of these has a longer wavelength? Uh, well, if we're looking from crest to crest or from trough to trough, uh, you can see this is a longer distance than this is here. So this would be my longer wavelength. That means the frequency is going to be low. So if this is a big number, then how many waves I can fit are, is going to be a very low number, if that makes any sense. So you can see I can only fit one, two, three, four waves in this space, whereas if, on the other hand, I have a short wavelength like this, it's a lot shorter, then the frequency can be really high. So I can fit one, two, three, four, five, six waves in that same amount of space. And that's the speed of light. Um, it's the relationship between the wavelength and the frequency of a wave or a photon of light. Okay, so what does that equation look like? Well, this is one way of writing that equation, okay? Um, if you're wondering what the heck 300 million is, 300 million is the speed of light, okay? Um, you can write that in scientific notation like this, or you can write it in decimal notation. And so since a lot of you don't use scientific notation or don't use it very properly, um, I'm just going to write it like this. Uh, but if you'd like to instead write it in scientific notation, that is also totally and completely okay. Notice the units, though. The units are meters per second, so meters over seconds. So that must mean that one of these is going to be meters and one of them is going to be in for seconds. So think about this, right? Wavelength, length, you know, that's got that word length in there. It's going to be the uh, meter part of our speed of light equation. So wavelength needs to be in meters. If it's not in meters, this isn't going to work. So you still have to be able to convert between your metric prefixes, in particular nanometers into meters, because that's the most common one you'll see. But wavelength is this weird symbol, OK? So this symbol is called lambda. It is a, a Greek symbol. And this is also a Greek letter, but I think I just kind of used the letter V in place of it. That's going to be frequency. And the unit for frequency is hertz. Sometimes you'll hear that when you're looking at like computer related things. Like it'll tell you, oh, you know, this has this many gigahertz or whatever. That just means how many waves pass a point in a second. Okay, so these are our units. We've got meters and we've got hertz. When you multiply those two numbers together, you get this number no matter what. This is the speed of light. It is the fastest that something can go in the entire universe. And light travels at the speed of light, obviously, um, in a vacuum. Okay, but so we are taking, you know, a little bit of uh, leeway there, but it's still the same idea. So remember, though, the relationship between meters and nanometers. So if you forgot that, right here, this is our base unit. This would be like meters. And then N, that would represent nanometers. And so there are nine uh, steps between uh, meters and nanometers. OK, so let's see if we can actually do this. I have 180 nanometers. I need to convert that to meters, right? So right here, I'm at nano. I need to go all the way to the base unit, which is 0. So I need to move my decimal place nine spaces to the left. So when you do that, what do you get? You get this, right? Because this is my decimal. I just move 1, 2, 3, 4, and you can keep going. So this is what that would look like. Now, try writing this in scientific notation. If you were to write this in scientific notation, what would that look like? Either one of those is OK, but I prefer scientific notation over decimal notation. OK, what about this? What if I had to convert 5.4 times 10 to the negative 7 meters to nanometers? Well, again, I'm given meters right here. That would be right here. And I need to move my decimal place nine spaces to the right this time. 
Okay, and so what do you get when you do that? You get something that looks like this to start with if I were to write this out, right? And so that would be 540 nanometers. So again, I'm writing this in decimal form. 5.4 times 10 to the negative 7 looks like this, and then that would equal 540 nanometers because I move my decimal place over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then I have to move it one more. That's 540 nanometers. So what's the relationship between energy then and frequency or wavelength? Well, that relationship, if you're looking at how much energy a wavelength of light has, then that's directly proportional to its frequency. So in other words, if we're looking at these two different pictures here, this has a low frequency, this has a high frequency, this has more energy, this has less energy. And that makes sense, right? So think about how many waves are passing this point. So we only have four in this uh, are passing uh, or able to go uh, from this distance to this distance. Whereas here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm able to fit seven waves instead. And so that's more frequent and that means that's going to have more energy. And yes, red as a color has less uh, energy than violet does or purple. Okay, so what does that mean? If the frequency is low, then the energy is going to be low. If the frequency is high, then the energy is going to be high. Okay, so let's see. Um, if we can write this down, just so we don't forget, that weaker means smaller energy, stronger means larger energy. So right here, again, lower frequency, that has a smaller energy, it's weaker, whereas higher frequency is larger, it has a lot stronger effect on whatever we're looking at. All right, so this is our last one. What is the wavelength in nanometers of a photon that has a frequency of 5.0 times 10 to the 14 hertz? Here is our equation, right? So what I got to do is plug that in. I've got my 300 million equals the wavelength times, and then this is my uh, this is my frequency right here okay, in hertz. So what do I do to get this by itself? I have to divide by my frequency. So let's divide both sides by the frequency so we can get rid of them. Now here's where everybody makes a mistake. If you're plugging this into your calculator, you need to make sure you have parentheses. When you put this down in your uh, calculator, it doesn't really affect very much. But when you divide by something, you need to make sure that you put that in parentheses. If you don't put this entire thing in parentheses, you're going to end up with a really weird answer. Okay, And remember, always ask yourself, does this make sense? So when you do that, you get 6.0 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. And that's pretty much what it asked for. Um, if you wanted to convert that to nanometers, you could. You just have to hop that over. Uh, nine spaces, and so that would be about 600 nanometers, which makes it a red wavelength of light. It would look red to us, okay? So again, if you have any questions, let me know, but that was it for this lesson.